Today on the caucus, it's a big week for the issue of gay rights. Nick Confessori reports from Albany, and Cheryl Stolberg reports from Washington. Also, John Harwood on the role of Speaker John Boehner after the near collapse of budget talks this week. Hi, I'm Nick Confessori. I'm here in the state capitol where the session for lawmakers ended four days ago and there still has not been a vote on almost any of the major issues still outstanding on Governor Andrew Cuomo's agenda. Republicans in the state Senate are meeting in a private conference room to decide if they want to hold a vote. It's possible that we can see a vote on same-sex marriage today at some point. It's also very possible that a backlog of other issues, including rent stabilization and passage of a property tax cap, could hold us up for a couple more days. And it's also possible that a vote on gay marriage, if it takes place, will only take place next week. You're probably wondering, what's taking so long? What's the holdup? Number one, a lot of Republicans just don't want this bill. They don't want to vote for it or a seat become law on the votes of mostly Democrats and a couple of Republicans. Two, there is this question of religious exemption. What kind of protections will be in the bill for churches, synagogues, and other kind of religious affiliated organizations. But often what happens in Albany, and this is the third reason, is that each player in the game, the Senate, the Assembly, and the Governor, are using issues the other side wants to try to get what they want. As Speaker Silver of the Assembly says, nothing is done until everything is done. From Washington, Cheryl Stolberg on the political calculation for President Obama. President Obama has really been all over the map on gay marriage throughout his political career. His relationship with the gay community has been kind of up and down. They did support him in 2008, but a lot of gay people were really kind of disenchanted with him. But then he came along with some pretty good victories. He got Don't Ask, Don't Tell repealed. He decided that the Justice Department would no longer defend the Defense of Marriage Act in court. They still really want to know where he stands on their number one issue, the issue of marriage. 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 I, I heard you guys. <laughs> he's only gone so far. He said his views on marriage are evolving, and he's left it at that. I believe that gay couples deserve the same legal rights as every other couple in this country. Public opinion on gay rights is changing rapidly. For the first time, we're seeing some polls now that show a majority of Americans, albeit a very slim majority, favoring same-sex marriage. But nonetheless, the politics are a little bit complicated for the president. With Republican presidential candidates all in opposition, it could be tough for President Obama to announce his support. He doesn't want to elevate it to a campaign issue right now. Next week, he's going to have a gay pride reception at the White House. June is Gay Pride Month. It's an open question whether or not the president will actually endorse gay marriage. Some people think that if he does so, he might do so at the gay pride reception at the White House next week. Others say that if he does so, it'll be after November 2012. Yes, we have more progress to make. Yes, I expect continued impatience with me on occasion. <laughs> Eric Cantor's surprise decision to quit the budget negotiations leaves the party's leadership, Speaker Boehner and President Obama, as likely the only figures left who can make a deal. I'm here in Cincinnati, Ohio, the hometown of House Speaker John Boehner, who all of a sudden is the man to watch in negotiations with President Obama on the raising the debt limit and closing the long-term budget deficit. The talks that have uh, been proceeding under the auspices of Vice President Biden haven't exactly blown up. They've moved to the new phase, and that's the phase in which these two leaders are going to decide. Each president, just like each speaker, brings a different style to these negotiations. You have top-down speakers, Newt Gingrich in the 1990s, Nancy Pelosi more recently, who tend to command and control the House and get their members to go along with what they want. But you also have bottom-up speakers, those who have a looser control on the reins, who let their members have a greater voice in what is actually going to happen in the House. Denny Hastert, Republican, uh, who succeeded Newt Gingrich, is one of those. And now John Boehner is also one of those. John Boehner has said that he's going to let the House work its will more than it did in the Pelosi era. And that's one of the things that creates complication in these budget talks, because you have so many Republican members, first term members, people influenced by the Tea Party who are staunchly resisting any tax increases in this budget deal. And that makes the negotiations with Democrats difficult because Democrats say they have to have 
some tax increases for a balanced package. It will be uh, interesting tonight. I'm going to talk to Speaker Boehner and three of his predecessors, including Nancy Pelosi, Jim Wright, the Democrat, Denny Hastert, the Republican, on a panel at the Henry Clay Center for Statesmanship. This is a moment when speakers have to show some statesmanship, presidents alike, and their ability, President Obama and Speaker Boehner, to accommodate a deal that can get Republican votes and some Democrats in the House, Democratic votes and some Republicans in the Senate that the president can sign into law is critical to raising the debt limit and calming financial markets and investors, not just in the United States, but also around the world. It's going to be a fascinating discussion tonight, and video of that discussion will be available tomorrow on nytimes.com.